Welcome aspiring jazz pianists. My name is Mark Miller and as many of you know I teach jazz piano to students around the world I'm currently in 14 countries on four continents soon to be five continents with a new student coming aboard in Brazil South America uh, next month. I've titled today's video how to play jazz piano via the song Ain't Miss Behavin. Now, before I get into the song, I want to talk about a couple of ideas of my teaching philosophy. One thing I stress with all my students is the why of what I'm doing. Anyone can play their version of a song and tell you the particular chords they're using. But the real question that needs to be addressed is why. Why do I use block style in this particular measure? Why do I use a walking bass for this particular song? Why do I use broken tents in this particular passage? And sometimes a student can learn more by me answering, why not? Jazz is all about playing a song and making it your own, whether that be by changing the harmony or changing the chord voicings or rhythmically enhancing the harmony or even improvising over the changes. Each element can be learned with my teaching method. As my favorite jazz pianist Bill Evans once said, it's far better, than, it's far better to learn one song 20 ways than to learn 20 songs one way. This really sums up the essence of jazz for me, being able to play a song multiple ways. The beauty of my teaching method is I can teach you a dozen or so jazz concepts in two or three months of lessons, and then you'll have the skill set to play piano lifelong. And that's really what it's all about. I love my classical training, but I did not learn musical concepts. I just played dots on a page, as I'm sure many of you experienced. With my jazz training, though, I began to see how music is put together. And from this knowledge, I'm now able to memorize, arrange, and play music much more easily and with the deep satisfaction of knowing that no one else plays this song the way I do. So with that in mind, I'd like to illustrate some of these jazz concepts from the song Ain't Misbehavin'. So we're going to start out with a basic triadic harmony in the left hand. might find that in an easy fake book. In fact, one of the fake books, so-called your first fake book, um, didn't even give me that much. I had a couple of miss measures missing, didn't have a first and second ending. Okay, so that's the basic level my arrangements start at. Okay, now what if we wanted to rhythmically enhance that harmony? In other words, I'm still going to play triads. <laughs> But instead of playing the chords on beats one and three, one, one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one, I'm gonna give that harmony some rhythm, okay? Watch, one and a two and a three and a four, one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one. One more time. A two and a three and a four and a one. Okay, so I didn't get fancy with my harmony with sevens, nines, elevens, thirteens, right? I just did the melody and swing rhythm, one and a two and a three and a four and a, and then instead of playing the chord on beat three, I would, I'd play it on the uh of three, one and a two and a three and a four and a, or in this case on beat four, and I would anticipate the chord that would come in on beat one. Right, so I syncopate or rhythmically enhance the harmony. Okay, especially one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three. That chord there is held for two beats. So I definitely want to go right, right, which fills that space up with a more interesting rhythm. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one. one thing. Now that's pretty basic harmonically, but that shows you the power, I think, of great counting, understanding swing counting, which we can talk about later if you don't know about that, as well as knowing when to syncopate those chords. 
right? I'm not always syncopating them, but just enough, especially when I have when I have a chord on beat three and I'm holding it for two beats. It's kind of not a long time, but it's an opportunity to give that harmony some oomph, right? Make it swing even more. Let's talk a little bit about changing the harmony. What if I wanted to do, for instance, all right? This is all about targeting a chord, okay? In jazz, it's really exciting, actually. If you have a known correct chord, Everyone plays D minor there, D minor is triad or D minor seven, right? That's the correct chord basically at that juncture. So we can say to ourselves, well, if we want this chord, what chord demands resolution into that chord? Well, it's respective five. So I could try an A7. And that would go to D minor, right? Okay. What if I did a two five of the target D minor? Continued in that pattern. Okay, that's a concept. Once you get that concept, you can apply it in every single song. Okay, that's not something you're going to get in a fake book. Most fake books will just give you. Right? Nothing wrong with that, but I want more color. Voicings. Maybe I don't play. Right? Maybe I do the counter melody instead of the bass going up by half steps. Right? Maybe I put that movement in the top of my left hand. It's a pretty cool concept, right? I think it is. So basically, all of these ideas that I'm using are concepts. And once you understand the concepts, then hey, here's a fake book. Let's enhance it. Let's make it better. Let's say we want to do two five of the target, but we don't want to jump around. We don't necessarily want to do open. Let's say we're a relatively beginner player. We want to minimize our left hand movement. All right, I can just do two five of the D minor that way. what I call um, melodic thumb. My left hand thumb is moving very minimally, very logically, right? It's not as rich as the open, but it's still very effective. Okay, and then we can get into rootless voicings, all kinds of stuff. So my point is, um, as I mentioned, I teach students around the world. I feel very blessed to be able to make a living playing and teaching, and I want to share my knowledge. So beginning in May of this year, 2016, I'm actually going to start the Mark Miller Music Academy. And rather than going to Kickstarter for funding, I am going to reach out to my over 1,000 current, former, and potential students as well as my over 3,000 YouTube subscribers. And if we can get each one of you, or as many as possible, to pay $100, I will open up my entire library to the world. Because I want that to be my legacy. Okay? And I will devote the next year or two of my life to recording at least 250 to 300 new videos, all of which will be open to the public. Okay? So... In order for me to devote that time into building a library, though, I'm asking for a contribution of as much as you can contribute, but um, certainly if I could get $100, democratize this, and get 1,000 or two um, Mark Miller Academy subscribers, then um, you would not only be helping your own jazz education, but you would actually be helping me to open up my library to the entire world 
or that student in India or that student, like I have a new potential blind student in India. I want a teacher, but she can't afford my rates. Well, let's democratize my knowledge. Let's spread it around the world and really change the quality of life for many, many people. Okay? So again, all I'm asking for is $100. And I will, if you go to my website, pianoweb.com, fill out the contact page, just in the subject line, say, I want to become a member of the Mark Miller Music Academy. Um, I'm willing to contribute $100. I take Visa, MasterCard, um, Western Union. I have students in 14 countries. My newest student's from Kazakhstan. I absolutely love teaching her. It's a real, really fun to see her progress, and she's doing really, really well, especially as English as a second language. So basically, if you have a keyboard, you speak English, and you have a strong desire to be creative at the piano, I'm your teacher. So let me know your thoughts. You can... Uh, Call me. My uh, cell phone is 847-401-172, and that's the United States number, 847-401-1721. And if you are on the app titled WhatsApp, you can receive my weekly jazz piano tips slash quiz. And, again, if any of you want any video lessons, I sell my video lessons I also have real-time lessons, so you could start out with video lessons and uh, combine that with any combination of real-time that you wanted or vice versa. But um, let me know your interest in the Mark Miller Music Academy. Again, I don't really want to go to Kickstarter. I'd rather do it uh, through my 3,000-plus YouTube subscribers and my uh, former, current, and potential students um, who've either taken or want to take over the last 10 years okay so thank you for your time and uh, if you have any questions email me or join whatsapp and you'll get some great great tips for free via text on whatsapp which is free voice and text around the world so have fun and again thank you for your time <laughs>